Hey, out there in Radio Land, KC8ZKI, the QRP guy. I just had to make a video about this because I thought it was so cool what happened. I'm playing around with APRS. I got a new DigiRig cable today that uh, lets me connect my Yaesu HTs to the DigiRig, uh, to the computer, to run sound card modes. Uh, you know, the other th cool thing I got today is I actually made that little 3D spacer. You see that there between that diamond antenna? That's a diamond SRH77CA. It's a 15 inch higher gain antenna uh, that works great with this little FT60, and, but it had a gap there. And so I found plans online to print that little 3D spacer. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, I digress. So I hooked up the DigiRig to the laptop and I'm running Pinpoint APRS. You see there, Pinpoint APRS. And I'm using UZ7HO sound card software. So how did I connect that to the DigiRig? So let me show you. When you connect the DigiRig to your computer and you go to your device manager, you'll see that it creates a COM port. And that COM port is named Silicon Lab CP210X USB to UART Bridge, COM12 in my case. And that's the exact same chip that you'll actually see if you install uh, like one of the newer Yaesu radios, like an FT991A has that, the FTDX10. Uh, I'm not sure what other Yaesu radios, but I know for a fact those two do. A uh, very similar thing that you would see uh, with a Yaesu 70, or not Yaesu, I'm sorry, an ICOM 7300 or a Kenwood, uh, similar type of thing where it's, it's a built-in uh, port in the radio. In this case, you know, the DigiRig has it. And what this uh, has actually in the DigiRig is, is two things. It has a serial port that just allows you to do keying using RTS request to send, or it has a cat com port in addition to so i could do cat control over this com 12 or i can do request to send and just key contacts on the audio port so on the digirig you'll see let me see if i can get the picture of this you'll see there's two ports there's audio and serial i'm only using the audio port but in that audio port it's not just passing audio in and out it actually has contacts keyed to that COM12 that allow me to key an external radio, in this case, the HT. Uh, but, you know, you could key all sorts of different radios with it using different cables. So I've got some cables here that will allow me to do uh, some other Yaesu radios that are six-pin data. Kenwood radios, ICOM, quite a few radios use that six-pin format. And they sell a, a new number of different cables at DigiRig. So anyway... So I've got that COM port configured here on the UZ7 sound modem. Let me bring that sound modem back up. So if I go into the settings of the sound modem, devices. Okay, so I set the output device, comes up as speakers, USB, plug and play, sound device. The input device, microphone, USB, plug and play, sound device. And again, I would have seen that in my device manager as soon as I plug that digirig in it would install those two sound cards or well, one sound card in and out okay this is the other important piece you've got to enable the kiss server port on 8100 I think the 8000 uh, AGWPE server port is enabled by default but this one's not so I turned that on and then I selected the com port that the DigiRig came up as in my device manager. So that's it for configuring the UZ7HO sound modem. Other than making sure this mode is selected, so it's the AFSK AX25 1200 baud. That is old school packet from back in the day. And I'll tell you, this sound card modem works fantastic. You can see it's decoding things now. It, I have some really nice Cantronics TNCs, hardware-based. Um, they don't compare to this. I, well, I shouldn't say they don't compare. This is better, and, and they are no slouch. You know, the Cantronics TNCs are nice units, uh, but, but this is phenomenal. He's done a really great job with this sound modem. 
it, it really works well. Uh, and you can see here, so it, it's decoding, and you'll also see here in my communications monitor for Pinpoint that the decodes are showing there also. And uh, what I had to do there was I had to go to Tools, I had to go to Options, I'm sorry for shaking this all around, and then I had to go to TNC, I had to select Network Kiss Mode. You can ignore all of this serial stuff in the middle here because we're not doing a serial. If I was using one of my Cantronics, I would set it up here, but I'm not. I'm using the sound, the network KISS mode. So the network is already pre-configured down here, 127.001. I'm not sure if the port was already 8100. It might have been 80, 8001, maybe by default. You want to make sure it matches the KISS port on your sound mode. I mean, if you were using Direwolf, you know, it might be a different port there too. So anyway, that part's done and then, you know, you're okay. And then the only thing you have to do is go back to tools and say, uh, connect TNC. Now there's disconnect. So if I disconnect, now I can connect. So I would just do connect TNC and then down here it would say connected but it's already done that and then it will start decoding for you and if your radio receives APRS packets it will plot them on the map so I've been running this for about a half an hour and the one thing I didn't do when I started this up I'm sorry my thumb keeps coming over the lens the one thing I didn't do is I did not connect APRS IS that's the internet connection if I connected that, this map would be absolutely full uh, be, with everything in the area that's APRIs. And I didn't want that because I only want to see what the radio is receiving. So these are all packets that were plotted based on the radio receiving them. Now, it didn't necessarily receive them all direct because the way packets work is they can go through digipeters. So these little green circles indicate digipeters. Okay, so this station here, you'll see VE3SPR. He's quite a ways from me. If I go up here and I look at him on the last herd, let's see, let's find him there. He's, he is 88 miles north of me, okay? 323 degrees anyway, close to north. And the path, you see where it says the path there? The path is through K8YSE. And then the star means that that packet was sent wide one, wide two one. The wide one one was replaced by K8YSE's digipeter, digipeting it. And then I received it direct on this HT. So it only went through one hop, 88 miles away, one hop. That's what made me want to make this video because I thought, wow, that's really cool. All I've got here is a little HT indoors with that little diamond antenna. And I'm able to receive packets from VE3SPR across the Great Lakes there, across, across Lake Erie, 88 miles away, and by one hop, basically through, uh, who was it through? It was through K8YSE. Now, that guy's in North Royalton. Yeah, you can see him there. He's right here on the map, just south of Cleveland. He's about... According to APRS, if I were to look him up, I could, I, matter of fact, here, let's find him. K8YSE, where is he? There he is. So I can see how far is K8YSE from me. According to this, he is 16 miles north. So that hop went from my HT, well, from him to the HT, 16 miles, and then the rest of the 88 miles came from uh, VE3SPR. But what I could do now is if I wanted to, I could go into the messaging system and I could actually send VE3SPR a message uh, using the APRS system and it would only have to do that one hop, you know, uh, send message. There you go, send message. And it would go one hop to him. You know, I could also send an SMS, which is cool. You can look up how to do that. You can send text messages to people's phones and you can send emails and you can send win links. Um, you know, this is, these are all for another video, but 
Yeah, you can do them. This, if I just did send message, it would just pop this up and then I would say I want to send it to VE3 SPR. Hello from KCAZKI. Okay, now I'm going to hit send. There you go. Oh, I don't think I was quick enough. And it, it, it basically just sent. So whether he replies or not, we don't know. But I just sent him a message. So if I go down to my messages, we'll wait and see. There's my, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the screen and I'm not showing you guys. So it shows my sent items there. And uh, of course I, I typed his call sign wrong, WE3SPR. He's never going to get that message because he probably, well, there might be a WE3SPR in the world, but uh, I'll just clear that. Let's try again. Let's give a new message. Let's, let's see if I can type right this time. WE3SPR. Hello from KCAZKI. And we'll send that again. Okay, now it's sent. And hopefully it's the right guy. So now we'll see if he's uh, happens to be, you know, sitting near a terminal or has it on his phone or however he's doing APRS, he may respond and say hello back to us. But I can guarantee you that he probably received that because it, it would have gone from this HT back up to that station, maybe to the one in Akron. Uh, you know, there's multiple paths that packet could have been.